Hello, welcome to episode six of Mouth Dancing with your host, Young. Most pants are of a uniform tightness that you buy at the store. They're either all baggy or all slim or all tight. I mean, sometimes there are pants that flare out at the bottom, like bell bottoms or boot cut pants. But generally speaking, pants are like a uniform bagginess throughout. I think they should make pants that are are tight in the legs and then really loose in the crotch and butt area. That would be really comfortable. And then that way you could wear tight pants and not have them really squeeze your crotch or right up your butt, you know, when you sit down or try to bend over to do stuff. It'd give you a lot of room, you know, in your in your junk area and your in your butt too, you know, if you don't want you don't always want to wear like something that's really form fitting on your butt, you know, unless you really feel like showing it off sometime. And I know that, mm, I guess hammer pants were kind of like that. They were pretty tight in the legs and then the, the crotch area was really baggy. But I haven't really seen anything since then that is like that. And I mean, the style wouldn't exactly be like, those either because those were mostly just in the ankles i think like kind of your knees and below they were tight but then from your thighs up they were loose i'm imagining more like they're tight all the way up to your your thighs like the mid mid or even upper thigh and then the crotch and rear part is really loose so that when you sit down they don't like you know constrict your balls I guess this isn't that much of a problem for women, but it could increase comfort for women too if, you know, you just don't feel like squeezing into tight pants. Or you want this tight style for your legs, right? But you don't want the, the tight style up above. And this would also be useful too if um, you have to wear an adult diaper or if you have an accident, you know? It wouldn't be as obvious if there's like a a turd in your pants and sometimes with tight pants like uh, they make your underwear bunch up you know like when they're tight and they just keep making your your boxers right up your legs so that it's all bunched up right by your crotch you know that can get uncomfortable and then you have to like put your hand down your pants to like pull your underwear back down your leg that would eliminate that problem as well and yeah so you could you could get the best of both worlds that way. You'd have comfort, you know, in the in the areas that really matter. But you could still be really stylish looking down below. I know some people like the classic tight ones that are tight all the way through from the, you know, top to bottom. And because they like to show off, you know, what they got. But then some people, mm, maybe they're more modest about that. But they still want the stylishness down below. Or it could even be like for aerodynamics. Like if you're riding a, a, a horse or a bicycle and the seat, you know, can get uncomfortable if it's really, if you have really tight pants on. And you're, you know, that riding motion will make, make the pants keep riding up further and further and like really squeeze you down there. So these kind of pants would be really good for that as well. Then you could still preserve that uh, aerodynamic quality for your legs but then the, your seat would still be comfortable i know there are those old um horse riding pants called jodhpurs that are pretty similar to what i'm describing but what i'm thinking of would be even more extreme than that so from about you know right below your crotch all the way down to your uh ankles the pants would be super tight like um like yoga pants but then the, the area around your, your crotch and your butt would be super baggy. 
So there wouldn't be like much of a flare. It would be just like kind of like a huge balloon up top and then it gets really tight and then goes straight down to your feet. You know how people talk about digging all the way through the earth all the way to China? People joke about this sometimes. I think they used to joke about it more for some reason. I used to hear that a lot when I was a kid. Okay, I'm going to dig all the way to China. But that's actually not really a, a bad idea. They should dig tunnels all through the earth from from all the major cities, you know? So you could have like an international subway system that goes from, say, Seattle all the way to Asia. And then you could just take a one, one-stop subway, you know? It's kind of like a... Uh, a flight with no layovers and it just goes straight through the earth and then you end up on the other side and then you wouldn't have to fly for people who are afraid of airplanes might be kind of scary though being in a tunnel for that long several hours at a time some people I know are claustrophobic about being in subways or like elevators because they have a fear of getting trapped in there for those people it wouldn't be very good but for people who aren't worried about that, but who don't like flying, you could just take this train that goes all the way through the earth. I bet it would be faster than an airplane too. And if you traveled this way, you wouldn't have to deal with air sickness either. Because then there wouldn't be turbulence and changes in altitude. And hopefully um, earth subway food would be better than airplane food. I wonder if it would eliminate jet lag too. Because you're not on a jet, you're on a train. And if you travel directly through the earth, I guess the scenery wouldn't be very good. It would just be a bunch of dirt and rocks everywhere around you until you got to your destination. But it would probably be just a better way of traveling. And you wouldn't have to worry about the the airplane crashing into the into the sea or into a mountain or something. It would just be a train. I guess it could derail, but if it's just going through the earth, it's not going to fall off off of like a, a cliff or off of a bridge. I mean, you could still have a pretty bad crash if it derailed, but it wouldn't be as bad as a plane crash. Oh, and you could probably get rid of uh, jet fuel this way. They could use... Um, those magnets like they have on a speed train. You just need electricity and magnets to power this thing. I guess one problem might come from um, trying to figure out which country's company gets to run the train. I guess you could have multiple train lines. Kind of like you have airlines from all different countries. But then that would increase the chance of derailments and things going wrong in the tunnels. It would be better if it was just one one train that uh, the whole world agreed to make. Or like a series of tunnels where just one train travels through each tunnel. We call it the, um, the global subway system. I was thinking about that saying the hot camera adds 10 pounds. Is that still true, or is that something that was just on older cameras? I wonder what di if digital cameras have the same thing. They seem to have more of a problem of like high def cameras. You could see more of uh, like someone's wrinkles and blemishes, which was uh, less of a problem with tape. I wonder which is worse, having the camera add 10 pounds, but your skin looks good. Or not having it add 10 pounds, but making you look, you know, too realistic. Like, they're so high def that you could see all this of, of a person's eye boogers and nose hairs and frown lines and crow's feet really well. But if a camera does add 10 pounds, even like the newer ones, when someone, like when an actor is preparing for a role where they have to gain weight, can they factor that 10 pounds in so they don't have to gain as much weight as they thought they did? Like say, 
say the role requires you to be uh, like fat Elvis or something. And let's say, know, let's say you're the same. Everything about you is the same, like your height and everything. And fat Elvis, let's say he was like 250 pounds and you weigh 180. So would you have to only gain 60 pounds since the camera adds 10 pounds? Or would you have to add, or, or would you have to gain the actual weight? I know they also have uh, fat suits and like special makeup you can put on to make yourself look fatter. But people don't really seem to use those like serious actors. They're like uh, too good for that. They're like, I'm going to go method and actually gain all this weight. It looks more convincing too if it's not makeup and a fat suit. So I guess maybe that's why they do it also. But if cameras can add 10 pounds, why don't they just make um, a camera that adds more weight so that actors who have to play these roles where they have to gain weight, they don't have to gain as much weight that way. And it would probably be better for their health. Like, um, you know, make a camera that adds 20 to 50 pounds. Then the guy who's going to play Fat Elvis doesn't have to gain 70 pounds. He only has to gain like 20 or 30 or 40 pounds. But then I guess it would be a problem when it comes to the other actors in the movie who aren't supposed to gain weight for the role. Maybe they would have to lose a little bit of weight. Or they could film just their parts with the older cameras that only give you 10 pounds extra. I think they used more than one kind of camera for lots of movies these days and they can edit it together, the footage, and it still looks normal, like it's seamless enough where it doesn't look like you filmed it with all these different cameras. So for the guy, or yeah, so for the guy playing Fat Elvis, they could use the cameras that add more than 10 pounds, like 20 or 30 pounds. And then everyone else, they could use the standard cameras that only add 10 pounds. And then these people, I guess actors and actresses have to be pretty thin because the camera adds weight to you. So they could just do the standard you know, skinny uh, skinniness that they go for and then do their role like that. Hmm. Either way, Cameras seem to add a lot of um, stress to an actor's life. They either have to get really skinny or they have to gain a bunch of weight. But uh, not as much weight as, the, as what's written on paper. But they still have to gain weight for these roles, which isn't healthy. And being underweight isn't healthy either, so... Hmm. They should figure out a way to solve this problem. Maybe they could... Maybe if you film with um, a camera that adds a bunch of weight and then a camera that adds less weight at the same time and then combine the, the video, combine the image, it would, it would average out to um, like a normal person or just their normal weight. Or maybe it has to do with the lenses and they could just change out the lenses. That might be the ticket right there. Either way, I hope they come up with a solution to this problem soon. And just for gen the general public too, you know, I want to be like my normal weight and not like look 10 pounds heavier when I film myself or even my loved ones. And I'm sure they feel the same way. And I'm sure most people out there feel the same way. And maybe one day, you know, HD will, will be more like tape and have more of a soft softening effect on people's skin. That would be nice too. You know how these days they have those uh, vacuum cleaners that they're like little discs. They just kind of, they're like little robot vacuum cleaners that roam around the house and vacuum things up. I think one brand is a Roomba. They should make Roombas that collect human waste too. So let's say you're working from home at your computer and you're really busy. Maybe you've been drinking a lot of coffee. You know, you need the caffeine. And you don't want to have to get up to go to the bathroom. And then, but then this Roomba, a uh, specially designed Roomba for human waste, comes over to you. And then you could just pee in its general direction. And then it like, hoovers up all, all of your pee. And then it just keeps roaming around the house and vacuuming the rest of the time. And you could kind of call it over with something, you know, like, you know how you say, like, hey, Siri, to activate your phone? 
or hey Alexa or whatever. You do the same thing for this Roomba. Maybe you could call it a Pumba or a Peeba. You could call it over and say, hey Pumba, I need to take a dump because I'm working right now and I don't want to go walk to the bathroom. And you just let it go right there and then it sucks it up. Then way, that way you don't have to go all the way to the bathroom. Then you could have like a, a special a robot arm that comes out and wipes it and everything for you. This would also be really good for um, late late in the middle of the night, you know, when you're sleeping. You don't want to have to get up to go to the bathroom. That's pretty annoying when you're like half asleep for a few hours because you need to pee really bad. Then you're just too tired to get up and go to the bathroom. You could just call over the Peeba and take a leak right there from your bed. Just right off the side of your bed and then it'll suck it all up. I hope that this um, technology is released soon so that we could all partake of it. And I'm sure uh, many of you out there feel the same way. Technology is pretty marvelous and I'm sure that someday soon we'll see that. Anyway, that's it for this episode of Mouth Dancing. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.